Hi everyone, this is Griff Patch, and uh, today I'm going to make a tutorial on how to make a top-down scrolling game. Uh, I created this game, Zombie Cube Escape, uh, a couple of weeks back now, and with the sole purpose of being able to show you on YouTube how to make a game like this. Um, so this game, as you can see, I can control my square, and the level scrolls around, and it's also got enemies. Now that's probably the, the most uh, difficult part of the game. But uh, to begin with, I'm going to show you how to make the scrolling part and the level, and then we'll move on to doing the enemies next. So without further ado, let's stop this and we'll create a new project. OK, so first off, name your first sprite as player. I like to call it player. That makes it nice and easy to know the player sprite. And we need another sprite now. So let's add a new one and we'll paint it. And this one is going to be called, um, what should we call it, level, like that. OK, let's just make this a bit smaller so we can see this, the uh, area here. Now, this is the fun bit because you get to draw your level. Um, and what we're going to do is draw a, a level that's zoomed out. So when you play it, it's going to be much bigger. Um, but it means that you can have a big level that scrolls around. OK, let's switch to bitmap mode. And now fill in the entire background black. That's going to be the background of the level, black. And on top of that, we're going to draw our walls. So choose a color for that, a nice green. There we go. So we're on fill rectangle mode still. <clears throat> and now we can start drawing some walls. So let's just draw a few rectangles. Like so. OK. That'll do for now. So there's a little bit of a of a level to begin with. So let's give call this level one up here. There we go. OK, now go into your code and let's add an event receiver. When I receive, and we'll call this new message setup. OK, and now we need some variables. This is where we need the scrolling uh, variables. So let's make a new variable. Now be careful here, it's going to be for all sprites. So I'll use uppercase letters so I can remember that it's for all sprites. I'll call it scroll x in capitals. Did I get space there? No, nope. there we go. Scroll x. I'll create that. I'll create another one. And again, capital letters, scroll y. OK. And now we want a position variable for the level itself. And that's going to be useful later. So I'll just call it x in lowercase. This time, click the for this sprite only. Click OK. Make a variable y. Again, lowercase, not uppercase. This sprite only. And then in your setup, set the x to 0 and set the y to 0, like that. What we need to do is resize this level to make it big. Now, for this to work, you need a little trick. Go back into the costumes, add a new costume, let's paint. And this is going to be a really small costume. So I'm just going to add in a little, draw a little dot there. Might not really need to even do that, but I'm going to do that for now. So there we are, it's a little tiny dot. I'm going to call this dot, like that. OK? Then go back into code and then change to that costume first. Switch to costume dot. And the reason we do this is because then we can now set the size of the costume to nice and big, say 300%. So it's going to be three times bigger than the current little dot. And then we can switch the costume back to level one. Now what you'll find is if we were on level one and we set the costume to 300%, because it's a full screen, well, let me show you, let me show you, nice and easy. Um, so if I switch to costume one, okay, there's our level. And then I say set size to 300. That is not 300 size. If you have a look at the actual size, if you click on here, The actual size is 150, even though we set it 300. Now, that's because Scratch does not want you to make that costume very much bigger than the screen. However, if you switch to costume dot, which is nice and small, there it is, then set size 300, it does it, and then switch back to costume one, stays at 300. 
and there's our costume at 300% of the level. So now we've got a big, big costume that we can move around and scroll. So let's put that back to how it was. Dot, size 300, switch costume to level one. Excellent. So that then sets up our level ready to go. Next step, we need to add in our little guy. So let's put in the beginning of the project or in green flag clicked like that. Uh, we then want to set the scrolling variables. So set scroll X to zero and scroll Y to zero. It's always important to have set your variables up at the beginning of the project. Otherwise you don't always get them resetting to what you want them to be. And you kind of forget and you wonder why the program doesn't work the second time you run it. So set that like that. We need some new variables, the player's position. So this is gonna be for this sprite only, have an X. Click OK. Another variable Y again for this sprite only. And these variables we will set to zero as well. OK, now we need to broadcast to set up the level. So in events, broadcast and wait, and we broadcast setup. So now when we run this project, it will set everything up and call the level and set that size up properly too. Okay, let me just hide all these variables we're creating because they're not very useful all over the screen. Same in the level, let's get rid of those. There we go. Right, now we need a little character. Now we could keep the uh, cat if we wanted, but I'm just going to simplify that and make it into a little cube person like I did in my zombie cube. So paint, just zoom out so I can see the whole screen. Choose a color for your little guy. I'm going to go for red and then draw a square in here. Now, if you hold down while you're dragging, hold down shift, it creates a perfect square, which is nice. So let's do that. Let's get rid of the scratch cat costumes. And I'm going to call this costume player as well. Let's go back to the code. So now at the moment, I can't see my player because he's behind the level. So let's make sure he comes to the front. So let's say looks go to front. Yeah, if you run that it should pop up. There he is. Okay, so what we need now is to add in the game loop. So in the um, controls, let's add a repeat until and just pop it in there. So this is going to run until something occurs and that's going to be until the end of the game. So we'll leave that empty for now because that means it will just repeat forever until we add something in there. So click a broadcast in here, just a normal broadcast, not a broadcast and wait, and a new message, and it's going to be player move, like that. Okay, and then put a receiver for that in here like this. And in here, we're going to have a custom block. So create a new block. And we're going to call this player move and we're going to run without screen refresh and then add that player move to there like that okay so everything we're going to do to with moving is going to go in here for that we need lots of ifs so if and then a sensing block and a, and a key pressed if we press up arrow key then now another custom block and we're going to call this try move and then um, x add an input and it's going to be add x and then add a text y and add another input and call it add y then click ok that makes us a nice little block here. And what we can then use is put the uh, custom block into there and we can say how much we want to try moving when we click the up arrow. So X, we want to move zero and Y, we want to move up. So let's put in four there. Okay, let's move that down a bit. So this is gonna be the same for each of the directions you can push. So let's do another one. When we push the uh, down arrow, we want to move the Y by minus four. And I'll duplicate it again. 
when we press the left arrow, we want to move x by minus 4, y by 0. When we press the right arrow, we move the x by 4 and the y by 0. OK, did we get that? And then we can code up our moving block here. Um, so let's do that first. So when we press an arrow key, we're going to call this try move. So this will try and move our player in the direction that we've specified. So we need a motion go to block here, like this. So our position, we use a bit of maths in here. So let's put in the add operator. And the position we're going to be at is our x, which is our player's x position, plus the amount that we want to move. So this gives us the correct position of our player, but we need to account for the scrolling of the screen too. So in here, we have to also have a take away scroll x in here and drag your x plus add x into the left side like this. So the position of the player is the player's position x plus the amount we want to adjust it by removing the amount of scroll of the screen and that gets us the exact position on the screen that it should be at and we want the same thing for the right hand side oops same thing for the right hand side only it's going to be y it's going to be add y and it's going to be scroll y okay so that finds the exact position that we want to relocate to now if after moving to his position it's touching the green wall then we want to not move the player so if sensing touching color and then pick the color from the level here which is this green that's what we actually want is not if we're not touching a green wall then we want to allow the move so what we then do is change x by add x and change y by add y okay so what we're doing here is we've positioned the player on the screen but we've not actually added anything to his x and y which is what's storing his location and we only actually change his location his stored position if we're not touching a wall so that's the trick we're using here okay good so now we want to add another broadcast into the repeat loop so we've moved the player then we want to move the level so new message move level like that now when we call level move um, put in the receiver down here and it's going to be called move level and we want to just position our player so it's the same kind of script we had before not with the if bit just without the add so it's going to be get this in the right position I'm going to get that there. there we go X yeah, get rid of those ads so we're going to position our player exactly where he should be where his X position take away scroll X and Y position take away scroll Y when move level is called now I'll sh do the moving level part in a second but let's just give this a play and see what happens okay look so I press the arrow keys my cabaret moves and if I walk into a wall it stops so this is actually working really well no scrolling but it is doing exactly what I wanted it to do okay so now we need the scrolling level so what we're going to do is change the scroll X and scroll Y and that's going to happen here at the bottom of the player move custom block. So after we've done all the movement we're going to scroll the screen to reflect the movement that we just made so in variables we need a change and we're going to change scroll x by now add in here a round so that's going to round the number to the nearest whole number no decimal uh, fractions um, which is important for when you're moving around because it tends to cause quite a bit of a problem if you have fractional numbers when you're just trying to do touching stuff and scrolling so i always round it to the nearest number so round and we want to move it by 
bit of the distance towards the player. So the player moves over here, the level wants to move back towards the player. So what we're going to do in here is have a divide and then on the left side a minus. So this is going to be the distance between the player and the current scroll of the screen. So let's put in the player x, the current player, take away the scroll current position. That's the difference between the player position and the screen scroll position. And we're going to divide it by 10 so that it's going to move it by a tenth of the amount, the distance between the two things. So that means it kind of will slowly catch up. And the same with the scroll y. We'll change that to be y, take away scroll y, divided by 10. Okay, that will scroll the uh, scroll x and scroll y. All we need to do now is position the level to that with that scroll as well. So we've added in the move level here, which has been positioning our player based on the uh, current scroll. We want this also in level. So I'm just going to drag it into level. Okay, if we go into level, there it is. So this is also now going to be positioning the level with the scroll. Let's just run that and see what happens. So if I now move, look at that. Smooth scrolling. And I can't walk into these walls, which is perfect. So that's really good. See how far we've got already. There, yeah, so I'm pretty pleased with that. Um, that's a really good start to our game. Um, you, of course, can now go ahead and design this level just as excitingly as you want. So as I move around here, I could, for example, draw in another wall. So if I just pick the right green color again, Ooh, like that, I can draw in another wall here. That's appeared straight away on the game. Let's move around here like this. I can then build some more walls. I can draw one in here. Just be careful as you do this. If I was to use the arrow keys now to move my player on the right hand side here, I'm also moving the wall because it's still selected over here. So the cursor keys moves the wall. So I'm causing a bit of confusion there on while playing the game. So make sure when you've drawn it, you click off it. Otherwise, when you move, you're going to start changing your level by mistake. But go ahead, design whatever level you like. Only the green is going to act as a wall at the moment. So you can draw other colors on the floor and it won't uh, get in your way. Design your level exactly as you like it. Uh, well, next YouTube tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add in some uh, enemies. So that is going to be fun. I hope you enjoyed that. I'm Griff Patch. Follow me. Thanks. Bye.